Percutaneous fetoscopic treatment of prenatally diagnosed open spina bifida has been previously described. This may involve placement of a biocellulose patch over the play coat with complete reapproximation of the fetal skin over the patch. In approximately 20 to 30 percent of cases, the skin defect is too large to allow primary reapproximation of the fetal skin. Therefore, an adaptation of the complete reapproximation technique for management of these complex cases has been proposed. This involves placement of a bilaminar skin substitute over the bicellulose patch and suturing it to the skin edges. The aim of the present study was to report the author's clinical experience with the use of a bilaminar skin substitute and a percutaneous fetoscopic technique for the prenatal closure of large open spina bifida defects. Surgery was performed between 24.0 and 28.9 gestational weeks under general anesthesia using an entirely percutaneous fetoscopic approach with partial carbon dioxide insufflation of the uterine cavity. If there was enough skin to be sutured to the midline, only a biocellulose patch was placed over the play coat. If skin approximation was not possible, the bilaminar skin substitute was placed over the biocellulose patch and sutured to the skin edges. The surgical site was assessed at birth and long-term follow-up was carried out. Percutaneous fetoscopic repair was performed in 45 cases of open spina bifida. Preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes occurred in 80% of cases. The mean gestational age at delivery was 32.8 plus or minus 2.5 weeks. Direct skin-to-skin -skin suture was performed in 32, while bilaminar skin substitute was performed in 13 cases. In the two-patch group, skin substitute was located at the surgical site at birth in all cases. In 5 out of 13 cases, additional postnatal repair was needed. The operating time was on average 42 minutes longer in the two-patch group, whereas the two groups had a similar rate of preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes and gestational age at delivery. Complete reversal of hindbrained herniation occurred in 68% of single-patch cases and in 33% of two-patch cases. In four cases, there was no reversal two of which were myeloschisis cases. In conclusion, large open spina bifida defects may be treated successfully in utero using a bilaminar skin substitute over a bicellulose patch through an entirely percutaneous approach. Although the operating time is longer, surgical outcome is similar to that in cases closed primarily. Cases with myeloschisis seem to have a worse prognosis than those with myomalingocele. PPROM and preterm birth continue to be a challenge. Further experience is needed to assess the risks and benefits of this technique for the management of large open spina bifida defect.